Hello, friends, and welcome back to Stories About Entitled People. But before we begin, best way to support our channel is to leave comments, like, and subscribe at the turned-on bell so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Scum of a man hires my unit to do a job after refusing to pay us, so I help ruin him. This is a bit long because I have to give context to everything. Please bear with the explanation. A few things first. First, I'm a security officer with a private investigator certification, which allows me to take PI, private investigator cases, as long as it doesn't interfere with local police investigations, and any crimes that I witness must be reported to the police ASAP so they can make an arrest. PI cases come from a few sources. We're sometimes contracted by local police to do what's referred to as spotter work, where we're brought on an active wide area investigation to do recon work and look but not interact with anything that might be involved with the case. Basically, we're just an extra pair of eyes, or the local police will mix us in a surveillance operation, and we would follow low-profile individuals and report their day-to-day -day activities. These are completely confidential. Then there is client contracts. This is where corporate clients contract our company's personal investigations unit to investigate their employees' day-to-day -day activities while on the job to see if there's some hint that an employee is committing a crime, and to report if there's reasonable proof that an employee is breaking the law on company time. The job is to gather evidence to prove guilt or innocence. These aren't confidential, but we usually sign a non-disclosure agreement. Finally, there are personal contracts. When a person wants to hire a personal investigator to do a job, it's usually something along the lines of a husband or wife suspecting that their spouse is cheating on them and wants some kind of proof. Or someone's looking for a relative or lost family member and is trying to reconnect with them. There's no disclosure agreement and it's up to the client to draw up a disclosure agreement. Most don't, but we keep quiet as a professional courtesy. Okay, now that the job description is done, let me tell you what happened. About three years ago, I'd been hired to do a personal contract. The client, a rich, sleazy snob, was apparently stupidly rich. He hired my unit, and when I say my unit, I mean the unit I work with, a five-man team. He believed his wife was cheating on him with other people, and he wanted proof of this so he could start his divorce process with solid evidence. He contracted us in a six-month contract and was to pay the company XXX dollars upon completion. So we set up surveillance cameras all over his large house and in the woman's car with the client's permission. We had at least one of the team tailing her at all times. Good times. Day in, day out, we watch their lives. And in this line of work, you either get detached or emotionally invested, like watching a soap opera. As we watched them, we quickly saw this lady was a freaking saint. She volunteered at a soup kitchen and a children's hospital. She helped with local churches, canned food drives, those kinds of things. She was the perfect definition of what a good human should be. On the other hand, the husband was a total bastard. He was the one we caught many times bringing women to his house. Sometimes he'd bring two or three girls in one day. And that was only what was recorded in the house. We arrived at the four-month mark, which is basically where we show all the evidence and give the three-quarter report. We show him everything that we found and have a six-hour debrief with video and audio support showing that she hadn't done any wrongdoing other than a speeding ticket and a few double park situations. After we concluded the debrief, he looked stupefied and says, So you didn't catch her cheating? That was the point of me hiring you. My boss, our captain, turns to him with a serious stare, which is perhaps the most serious and badass-looking face I've ever seen on that man, and said, You hired us to investigate your wife. You're unhappy that your wife is an honest and faithful woman? The snob is visibly annoyed. He stands up and is getting his jacket when my captain says, Look, there's still two months on the contract. We'll keep tailing her and we'll meet again after our contract is up and I'll give you any updates. The snob turns to him and says, Don't bother. This is over. I'm ending it. Come when she's not home and get your equipment out. So a week later, we did exactly that. Now, food for thought. When contracts like this are made, a small portion is paid up front as a commission fee. The rest is paid at the end of the contract's allotted time. In this case, it's six months. Now, pay works like this. The commission is divided up between each PI as a bonus to our salary, and the salary is what we get from the company to get us through to the completion of the contract. The remaining balance after being paid by the client is then divided into a cut for completion for the PIs and a cut for the office. Good money when done right. So fast forward to the next payday after the contract is officially over, 
My unit gets a call from our office to come in on the next payday as there's an emergency meeting regarding us and the last contract. We get there and find out Snob pulled the funding and refused to pay us for the work. So we're getting paid, just not with the completion bonus. We all left super pissed. We went to lunch and brainstormed how to get even with the effer. Then we remembered all the house footage of his dirty deeds. At first we wanted to blackmail him, but that's low and we're better than that. I remembered the wife, so I reached out to her. I set a date to sit down and explain everything to her. I showed her the videos. She cried for a good half hour. I think I broke her whole world. It was gut-wrenching. I then advised her to get a lawyer and proceeded to give her all the collected evidence and my business card. Aftermath. Fast forward about six months, I'm called into court as my company is suing him for fraud, breach of contract, and unpaid dues. My company wins the case easily as his lawyer's argument was that we failed to deliver the result he wanted. But we weren't hired to deliver a product. We were hired to observe and report. We got paid in the end. I was contacted by the wife who thanked me for all the evidence. She got a divorce because of all the evidence I gave her. She got almost everything, the huge house, both cars, and a huge cash sum. Moral of the story, don't try to screw over people who specialize in gathering evidence and reconnaissance. I'm glad she got everything. That's totally karma at its finest. And our next story. Build a driveway across someone else's property without permission? Pay the price. Not sure if this is pro enough, but here goes. I was visiting my friend at his dad's house in an area where the land is so steep all the driveways have to switch back up from the main road to the houses. A straight driveway is not an option because it'd be steeper than the building code allows. A few doors down the road, there lived a nice old couple who until recently had a vacant lot next door to them. But the lot had sold and the new owner had started construction on a new house. Unfortunately, the lot was so steep that the owner built his driveway partly on the old couple's land. It was carved out of the hillside with an excavator. This probably wouldn't have been a big deal if the new owner had approached the old couple first and asked nicely, but did he? Well, would I be telling you this story if he had? In fact, the old couple had no idea what was happening until they came home one day to see a huge scar in the hillside snaking up from the main road in front of their house across from the corner of their property and winding upwards to where an excavator was working to prepare the land for their new neighbor's house. They were pretty upset, but being nice, reasonable people, they figured it was an honest mistake, so they went over to talk to the machine operator. He didn't know anything useful, but he was happy to give them the phone number of the new property owner. The old guy gave him a call and politely explained the situation, but his new neighbor, whom he'd never even met, was having none of it. He flat out denied that the driveway crossed the property line, and he was rude enough that the old guy was pretty upset. At this point, the old couple wasn't sure what to do. They double-checked the property pins to make sure they were right, and of course they were, but after further conversation with the new owner, it was clear he was an unreasonable guy who wasn't going to come to the negotiating table willingly. The old couple didn't want to take legal action because that would have been expensive, and Frankly, the damage to their yard was already done. At the same time, they couldn't just let someone walk all over them like that, especially if they were going to be living next door for the foreseeable future. So the situation stewed for a while as construction continued on the new house, until one day when my friend's dad saw the old couple in the neighborhood and they started chatting. Of course, they told him the story about the new jerk neighbor. My friend's dad really likes the old couple, who don't have a mean bone in their bodies, so he was getting pretty upset about the situation, and when he went home, he couldn't get it out of his head. That evening, after a few beers, he had a brilliant idea. He called up the old couple and explained his plan and asked their permission to carry it out. They chuckled and gave him the go-ahead. So he hopped into the rusty old full-size pickup he kept as a second vehicle and drove it over to the old couple's place, where he parked it across the encroaching driveway, making sure it was entirely on their property. The next morning, the work crew arrived bright and early to find that they couldn't drive to the house they were building because some jackass had parked a crappy old F-150 across the driveway. They saw the note in the window with my friend's dad's phone number on it, so they called him to ask WTF. He explained that he had permission from the owners to park there and that, no, he would not move his truck so they could get to work. Furthermore, if anyone attempted to tow the truck, they would be charged with trespassing and theft. 
There was no way the construction guys were going to haul all their tools up the hill by land, and they didn't want to get into the middle of a legal battle, so they just called the new owner to let him know they'd be taking the day off and that they'd continue to take days off until the property boundary dispute was resolved. The new owner called the old couple in a fury, but the old couple told them the same thing that my friend's dad told the construction workers. Basically, the vehicle was parked on their own property, so if he had a problem with it, he could go F himself. To make an already long story shorter, the new neighbor ranted a while but eventually wanted his house to be built, so the nice old couple ended up with a significant sum of money in exchange for an easement allowing the driveway to pass across the corner of their property. And my friend's dad got several thank you cases of beer and the satisfaction that comes with putting an a-hole in his place. Edits. Phrasing. This occurred in a small town in Canada. For those who think I made it up, thanks for thinking I'm so clever. But judging by the number of similar stories in the comments and people asking if this was in X town, I think this happens pretty often. Not too surprising considering the number of houses built each year in the world. Regarding the legal questions and comments, the reason the guy built the driveway where he did was because it was cheaper and easier than making it all on his land, not because there was no other option. So most of your points, if not all, are moot. I'm on mobile so I can't paint a picture, but imagine two lots next to each other on the uphill side of a road with the property boundary perpendicular to the road. The older couple live on the left when you're looking uphill, the new driveway is for the property on the right, and it snakes up the hill in a roughly S shape. The bottom 50 feet or so of the driveway crosses the old couple's land to reach the road. I'm not sure if any trees were harmed in the making of this post. The driveway was done by the time I saw it, but the couple didn't make that an issue, so I suspect not. And yes, my friend's dad drove after. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video to the end, and I'll see you in the next one.